You're watching ACC Update on CardioSource Video News. Coming up, ACC launches two performance improvement activities offering Part 4 MOC credit. As part of our commitment to reduce CV disparities in outcomes, ACC has formed Credo. And later, we'll talk to Dr. Jim Fazoulis to discuss why you should be at the upcoming legislative conference. From the American College of Cardiology in Washington, D.C., this is ACC Update. Hello, I'm Lisa Fletcher. Welcome to ACC Update, a new program featuring news from your college. Our top story to help you stay on the leading edge of cardiovascular performance, ACC launched two new PICME initiatives, Keeping Pace and A New Era. Every year, there are 1.5 million myocardial infarctions in the U.S. Our new education initiative, Keeping Pace, can improve your knowledge, competence, and performance in managing and treating acute coronary syndrome. This program uses NCDR's action registry data to help you realize improved patient outcomes through review of your hospital data, targeted education, and quality improvement tools. Uh, some of you know this, maybe all of you don't. Um, part of this process is being willing to share your own data. And so the CME program is really tailored to your data. For a practice-based look into improving atrial fibrillation outcomes, we offer a new era. This PICME program leverages the power of ACC's clinical registries to give you a complete picture of how your AFib practice matches up to evidence-based care and the clinical performance of your peers. Well, we just launched a new program called A New Era. And within three weeks of opening the program, nearly 200 cardiologists have already enrolled. And they're using data either from the Pinnacle Registry or their own patient charts to identify where they can improve care for their patients and improve their outcomes. Both Keeping Pace and A New Era offer Part 4 MOC credits. Disparities in CV outcomes based on race or ethnicity are a problem that many communities and practices are facing. ACC recently formed CREDO, the Coalition to Reduce Racial and Ethnic Disparities in CV Outcomes, to address this concern. Under the program, cardiologists and other healthcare professionals on the front lines of CV care are given evidence-based tools to better serve their diverse patient populations and improve outcomes. Two members of the CREDO panel discussed some of the challenges in addressing disparities. What are the provider level issues that allow for disparate care, for evidence of disparate care to continue to flourish? Well, I think electronic health records for the patient, electronic medical records for the system is going to help with that because most providers don't even recognize that there may be disparate care within their practices. So first we have to identify those disparities. And physicians have to be hard and armored against the fact that they're going to have problems in their patient populations when they're really looked at in an objective manner. Every CV practice needs to understand the role of biomarkers. To help, we created Cardiac Biomarkers, a new clinical community on CardioSource. This innovative and interactive learning environment delivers original and synthesized data that can be incorporated into your practice to improve patient care. In the biomarkers community, you will find the latest in peer-reviewed literature, hot topics, ask the expert, interactive cases, and news and meeting summaries. We visited Dr. Michael Cantos, editor of Cardiac Biomarkers, to learn more. The goal of this website is to bring together the clinical and basic science investigator to engage them in a community that allows them to collaborate together. The threat of malpractice remains one of the most daunting concerns for practicing physicians. To reduce this threat, we've launched the ACC Risk Management Institute. This educational program is designed to increase patient safety and reduce medical liability claims risk. Risk management is important to members of the college because every practicing cardiologist faces uh, the possibility of uh, lawsuits and we found that the more we know about uh, the risk of lawsuits, the more we can manage our activities, uh, the, the lower the frequency or the lower the chances that we have of being faced with a lawsuit. The college is partnering with the Physician Insurers Association of America to review closed claim data and identify trends. 
When we return, we'll be joined by Dr. Jim Fasoulis, ACC Senior Vice President of Advocacy, to learn more about what ACC is doing to ensure patient access to quality CV care. Stay with us. This program is brought to you by CCT SAP2. Stay one step ahead of imaging technology with this self-assessment program focused on cardiac computed tomography. Visit www.cardiosource.org slash CCT SAP2 for more information. Welcome back. I'm pleased to be joined by Dr. Jim Fasoulis, who is ACC's Senior Vice President of Advocacy. Doctor, thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, the annual legislative conference is coming up this month in Washington, D.C. What is the focus of the event this year? Well, it's going to be multifaceted focus like it usually always is. We have actions that happened last year that have uh, really changed how cardiologists are practicing. We're going to have to address those, the physician fee schedule, for instance. Of course, the big thing is reform has passed, but reform hasn't been implemented. So there's a huge amount of implementation that has to go on, and we're going to help direct that. Uh, there's a few things in reform like the IMAP or IPAP, the Independent Physician Advisory Body, that is not going to be good for physicians, and we'll be trying to get Congress to pull that out of the reform. And of course, the big thing that's out there still and has been out there and has been kicked down the road month to month or six months at a time is the SGR. And that, if that goes through, physicians are looking at a 21% cut from Medicare, and we're going to be trying to get some long-term relief on that. What are the chances of that going through? Uh, I doubt that the SGR will go through, but there's also probably not a very good chance of getting the long-term change to legislation that we need to get it off the books completely. Lobby Day is a big part of this event. What message are participants taking to Capitol Hill? I, th I think one of the messages is going to be what the effect of laws and uh, legislation has on the practice of medicine. We saw from the 2010 rule a, a real migration of the practice, uh, the community-based practice into a hospital-based practice. And Congress, without thinking that was going to happen, has that the implication is significant increase in cost to the beneficiaries and increased in cost to the CMS or Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Uh, the other message is what we can do as the American College of Cardiology using our quality standards and our quality tools to improve care and also to actually save costs. You know, having a relationship with your lawmaker is very important and I know that you get that across to members on lobby day what are you asking them to talk about with their lawmakers on the hill and if they can't be part of that two or three hundred people who are there what else can they do? Well, I, th I think there's a couple things uh, first they have to know that just going to the hill one time is not necessarily going to have a big effect it's the long term get developing the relationship with the office and the uh, member of Congress so that you're a trusted source for uh, information about medicine, information about cardiology. Uh, how we do that is to bring people back to the ledge conference. We try to go through a process of educating them how to be a lobbyist. We also encourage them to meet with their uh, member of Congress in, in a home district meeting because then you usually get to really meet with the member of Congress. The other thing is to work with the chapter on the state issues and the, uh, the effect of federal issues on the state level. And finally, join the ACC PAC. Uh, the PAC is uh, there to, uh, and that's how Congress works, is they have to be reelected and there's the, the money that needs for reelection. And we can support candidates that uh, uh, have the uh, issues uh, and the policy beliefs that we do. And that gives us access to the office. It doesn't do anything more than getting us in the door, but uh, but it does help us get in the door. Sometimes doctors, as you were telling me, think PAC is a four-letter word. Yeah. How do you get around that? Well, I, I think doctors in general, not just PAC, but they think advocacy can be a four-letter mm -hmm. word. And what the way our government is set up, if our, our representatives and our senators don't know what the problems are, they're not going to fix them. 
And we are, it's our responsibility as citizens and concerned citizens to get those problems to them and to help them do the best policy. All right, Dr. Jim Fazoulis, thanks for being with us. You're welcome. And join us next month for all the latest news and information from your college. I'm Lisa Fletcher, thanks for joining us. Thank you.